And our first speaker for this, section, uh, for this session will be Joyant Anuj Das from the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Tiruvannintapuram, who will be telling us about the proof of a conjecture on Wiener index and eccentricity of a graph due to edge contraction. So let's hand it off to our speaker. Okay, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to present my work. Okay, so I'll go through the basic definitions quickly and then gradually uh, proof, uh, sketch of the proof of the community. Okay, so everybody knows this so graph is a ordered pair, V, I, V is a set of vertices 1 to N, and is the set of edges uh, that is a subset of V cos V. Okay, so we'll use uh, the notation uh, this related, I is related to J when the uh, vertices are adjacent, and this I not related to J if they are not adjacent. So this is an example of a graph on six vertices. So here the vertex four and two are adjacent, but four and six are not adjacent. Okay. Uh, vertex U uh, is said to be a neighbor of a vertex uh, V if uh, V is adjacent to uh, if U is adjacent to V. So for example, uh, if you take the vertex four, then the neighbors are one, two, three, and five. But six is not a neighbor of four. So collection of all such neighbors of V is denoted by this notion capital N G of V. Okay. okay. So next we define what we mean by uh, mean by an edge contraction in a graph. So for a given edge E, uh, we write G dot E to denote the graph obtained from G by contracting the edge E. Uh, more precisely, if A is, is E is the edge between two vertices X and Y in G, then the vertices X and Y are merged together, contracting the edge E and uh, thereby forming a new vertex. So we will understand this uh, thing by an example. So for example, you consider this. So here E is our edge, uh, which connects these two vertices X and Y. And after contraction, these two vertices are merged together to form this uh, vertex alpha. And gradually that edge disappears. And the remaining graphs remain the same. Uh, one thing one can uh, see easily that after this edge contraction, the neighbor of the vertex alpha will be the union of the neighbors of x and y minus x minus the vertex x y. So, for example, here two and one are neighbors of x, and three and four are neighbors of y. But after edge contraction, one, two, three, four all becomes neighbor of the vertex alpha. So we'll denote, we'll take the UV path in G is, is a path in G whose end vertices are UN. So for example, so one, three path will mean, suppose we take this first one to X, X to Y by two, three. So this is called a one, three path. So next we go to the definition of a <coughs> winner index. So if for a connected graph, G, we can define a metric D as uh, DG of UV is the length of the minimal UV path. And we set uh, D U comma U to be zero. So this is the usual notion of distance, and this distance forms a metric. Yeah, yeah, give me a so, moment. If we want to talk about that. Yeah. Yes? No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we define the Wiener index of a graph, W of G as the sum of all ordered paired of vertices u comma v or dg of u comma v. It can be also written as double summation notation, summation of all u, summation of all v, dg of uv, but we take it half at a day because in this ordered pair, these terms occur only one. But if it is a double summation, then d u comma v and d v comma u both will come. So we are taking this to just taking uh, take the sum one at a time. So this is the winner index. So now we define what is eccentricity of a vertex. So eccentricity epsilon g of u is the distance from u to the farthest vertex. And a vertex b is said to be an eccentric vertex if the distance matches with the eccentricity of the vertex of u. Okay. For a uh, graph g, The eccentricity of a graph is the sum over all eccentricity of the vertices. So it is also called known as the total eccentricity of a graph. Uh, one can see that the radius of a graph G and diameter are respectively the minimum and maximum eccentricity. So 
So next we go to the statement of the conjecture. So this conjecture was uh, posed by Darabi and others. Uh, so they say uh, the conjecture states that if E is an edge uh, of a graph where the number of vertices is at least three, then if we contract the edge, then the difference between the winner index and eccentricity decreases once we contract it. So they proved the result when E is a bridge, but uh, we proved, uh, after that we extended the result for the, without any for giving any condition on edge. We proved it for any general edge B. So for that we will use some lemmas and then gradually move to the Suppose U and B are two vertices of G dot T, which is different from the vertex alpha. So alpha is the vertex which is newly formed. We take two vertices, which is not the vertex alpha. The claim is that the distance between U and B is uh, will be same as the distance in G, but will be reduced by alpha. <coughs> so let's see the proof. Okay. So suppose uh, we take it UV path in G. So this may be some passes there, UV path in G. So it may happen uh, that the path uses the edge E or it does not use the edge E. So what do you mean? Suppose E is there, then we have X, Y, and then we have V. This is the path. That means it uses the edge E. It may happen that it uh, may use the edge E or may not use it. Suppose all the paths uh, does not use the edge, then after contraction, that path will be remain intact in the corner because that this uh, this edge is not there in the path. So after contraction, that path will remain intact. Hence, the distance will also preserve after contraction. But if one of the path use that edge, then in after contraction, the length of the UV path will be reduced by one, and hence the distance will also be reduced. So this is the only two possible cases. It will be either same after contraction or it will be reduced by one. Then all. So this is the first layer. So the next layer is for if one of the vertex is alpha. The previous layer we took that U and V, both of them were not alpha. So now one of the vertices is alpha. Okay. So if one of the vertex is alpha, and we suppose assume that all the minimal paths of plane in uh, G dot E. You come alpha. You take all the all the minimal paths. So if you uh, if one such path is there, so it starts from U, it goes. So suppose this is the vertex alpha. So before alpha there will be one vertex U, and then it means the uh, on the U alpha path the vertex just before the vertex alpha. That is, we suppose denoted by U. Okay. So it may happen in the original graph. Uh, since x y is contracted to the vertex alpha, so it may happen that either u n is adjacent to x or u n is adjacent to one. These two possibilities are there. So suppose all the minimal paths, the u n is adjacent to x one, adjacent to alpha is not adjacent to x. Then what happens? Then u n will be adjacent to y in the original graph, and hence the path will be. In the original graph, it will look like U, then it will be U N, then Y, then X in the original graph. Then, so the distance D G of U comma X will be D G dot E plus one because this was reduced to Y. But if one such path is there where U N is directly adjacent to X in the original graph, then the distance will remain same. So in the other case, it will be D G dot E U comma R. So otherwise, if you take uh, g d dot e on uh, g dot t e or u comma alpha one side, so it will be either same as d g u comma x or d g u comma x. So this is the distance. Uh, lemma on second lemma. So these two lemmas were on distances. So next lemma will be on eccentricity. Okay. <clears throat> so the lemma states that if x or y be the eccentric vertex of u in g. Then alpha will be the eccentric vertex of u in G dot. Okay. So for example, uh, okay. So we prove this by contradiction. So suppose alpha is not the eccentric vertex of u. So suppose there is one more 
what is w not equal to alpha that is the eccentric vertex of u then g uh, d z dot u comma alpha since u is not the eccentric vertex it will be less than equal to w comma alpha u minus 1 Minus one, and but in uh, G, uh, alpha x and y are the eccentric vertices. So D G of W is not eccentric vertices in G, so it will be less than two comma x minus one. Now combining these two, one can see that plus one will be less than equal to D G of two comma x minus one. In place. Two comma alpha will be less than equal to minus two. But this is a contradiction because uh, in our first lemma, this uh, this second lemma, we have shown that the difference can be either equal or they can be at most one. Bit. But here we got a two difference. So this is a contradiction. Still, so we will be essentially what is it? So similarly, I will not prove the second lemma. The second lemma says that if there is an essentially what is of u. In G, which is a different other than X and Y, then there exists a eccentric vertex of U that is common in both G and U. So I will not uh, prove in this one, uh, but I will just assume this fact and uh, just try to give a sketch of the proof of the problem. Okay, so we want to prove that this thing, this thing is greater than equal to this quantity. So we can write it in the whole form, in the expanded form, as a double summation. So I have taken this half inside, and eccentricity is the eccentricity of G is the maximum summation over all the maximum. Okay, so it will be enough to if I can show this thing is greater than equal to this. Okay, so one thing uh, one can easily see that other than x y in G and other than alpha in G dot e, all the vertices remaining vertices are same. So I'll denote the set of vertices, the set of common vertices in both graphs G and G W to be P bar. This was okay. So we divide this summation. This summation over U belongs to V G into two parts. First we uh, do this uh, for uh, this U belongs to V G. We divide into two parts. The first part will be uh, where U belongs to the V bar. That is the uh, set of all those vertices that are common. We will prove the result for this case. And and the second case is we will take uh, the x y vertices in G together along with the vertex alpha. So here is the x y x part, here is the y part, and I have to I have to show it is greater than equal to the alpha part in the G dot. Okay, so let's uh, try to do it. So okay. so I will try to do the first case. So if I uh, just write it down. Yeah. Okay. So let me just uh, view it from here. Okay. So suppose here, so we consider two cases uh, for this case also. We first uh, consider that x uh, x or y is the eccentric vertex of the vertex U, and uh, we and the second case we consider there is an eccentric vertex which is different from x and y. Okay. So we simplify uh, this uh, inequality to get it belongs to V bar dg of u comma v. So I have taken v bar here means I have taken out the x and y part minus half of dg of u comma x plus half. D G of U comma Y minus of D belongs to B bar D G of U comma V plus of D G dot D of U comma. So how did I get it? I assume that X is the eccentric vertex of U. So here there was one X right because we are taking summation over all B. So I have taken now summation over B bar. So Uh, x comma v and y comma v has come out. So this y comma v is here, but there was minus the d minus eccentricity, right? This maximum bar I have assumed to be x. 
so half minus one so that's why it's minus one so this is the part and this is the part for the g dot e part okay now if you compare these two portions so if i can write it so it is half conversion of v belongs to v bar dg of u comma v minus conversion v belongs to v bar dg d of u comma plus the remaining part which is dg of u comma y g dot t comma u comma alpha minus d a u so now one can uh, see that this part is greater than or equal to zero because uh, these two distances either they are equal or this distance is greater than uh, just one more than this distance. so this is greater than or equal to zero, this part. now here also so if you compare these two parts these two parts is either equal to zero because their distance will be say, same using the lemma or this distance can be at most one more so it can be minus one they it can provide but since u is not equal to v, so this part will uh, manage that part. So this thing is also greater than equal to zero. Hence, uh, we have proved uh, for the case if x or y is the asymptotic matrix of u, then this thing is this inequality holds. Okay. So similarly, I prove the next part. So if there is an asymptotic matrix which is other than x and y, so let W be as such an asymptotic matrix. Then again, simplifying. This is the case one part two that uh, yeah, other than x y w is an asymptotic matrix. Okay, so here simplifying we will get summation over v belongs to v bar minus w. I have taken that asymptotic matrix outside d g of u comma v plus d g of u comma x plus half d g of u comma y minus dg of u comma w this is the w is essentially what is and the remaining parts for the g dot e portion v bar minus w g d dot e comma u comma v minus of u comma alpha okay now i take in again uh, Take parts together and try to show that each of the parts are greater than or equal to zero. So take this part together, dg minus and the remaining part is of u comma x, u comma y. U comma W G dot U comma alpha U comma W. So this part. So now again by the lemma, uh, this thing is greater than or equal to zero because either they are equal or this or this quantity is greater than is one more than this quantity. So this this quantity is taken care of. It is greater than or equal to zero. It will be enough to show if I can prove that this quantity is greater than or equal to zero. So let me simplify further what this quantity really looks like. Um, we are over time. So if I could ask you to wrap it up in the next 30 seconds or so, that would be great. Uh, yes, it's just uh, okay. so, so that simplifies to uh, d g u comma x. So half is taken care of, half is you don't get it. G u comma y minus u comma alpha greater than equal to d g of u comma w minus u comma w. So this thing is at most one, and here it is also at most one, and this is x, u is not equal to x, so it is also greater than equal to one. So this inequality also holds true, and this part is also greater than equal to zero. So uh, similarly, we can uh, show the part uh, two of the proof, the second case. Uh, so this uh, proves the conjecture. These are the few references. So this is the paper uh, where we. This is the paper where we had the conjecture was stated. So, thank you. All right, everyone. Let's thank so our this speaker. Is our campus. <laughs> Beautiful.
Um, I do think in the interest of time, we're gonna um, move to our second speaker of the session.